this video I'd like to show you how to make some miniature pottery pieces. They're basically just tiny versions of big forms. I try to have all the considerations that I would in a big form. Nice trimmed foot, uh, nice thin walls. I often throw miniatures thinner than you know a normal size because proportionally I'm trying to keep them looking uh, proportional to a large piece. You can throw things, you know, miniature versions of big ones like this pitcher. I mean, you're not really going to use a pitcher like that, but it's awfully cute to have a mini version. Um, I do some scraffito, mini versions of big ones. Um, lidded pots are a lot of fun, even though you're not really going to put cookies in this kind of cookie jar. It's a nice little mini version. And lastly, I've got my little teapot here which also is just a mini version. It's got a little trimmed bottom, got a little thrown lid and a gallery, a little thrown spout. Uh, it's all functional. Okay, so right here I have uh, a piece that it was already in progress. I wanted to show you uh, what I'm gonna be doing and that is I'm going to be throwing it on what is um, referred to as throwing on the hump or I often tell my students it's just called throwing on a mound. Um, I need to grab my knife. I misplaced my knife. Okay, now that I have my knife uh, in hand, I'm going to go ahead and trim off the uh, base of this. Now, what I like to do is I like to make two cuts. The first cut is going to be where the actual foot is going to be trimmed, that level of the foot. Now, when I cut it, I cut it almost all the way through but I leave a little bit attached in the middle. And then the secondary cut that I make is a little bit lower. If you can see, it's almost got like a little clay bat to it. The purpose of that is it is protecting the very base. So when I do go to trim a foot, it won't be marred or messed up from the knife. Now, the way that I did this is I uh, centered only the top portion of the clay by uh, using a larger chunk like this, I find it goes much faster for me. Some of my students I know in the past really don't like this method and they prefer to center tiny little balls of clay, which is fine if that's what you like the best. But by doing this, I can mound up a top portion and then I just take my fingertips to center that little piece up at the very top. And it's all a matter of using fingertips and smaller bits of uh, pressure. So what I'm gonna do here is I've kind of made a delineation of where I'm going to be cutting it eventually because you do wanna make sure that you're not gonna cut through the bottom of your pot. I've done that many times. And now when I drop my middle, I have to be conscious of where I'm gonna be cutting it off down here because of course, I don't want to go too low. So next, what I'm going to do is go ahead and pull up on my wall. Now, this is going to be a small little vase form. So by doing this, I'm using one finger on the inside. I really do give the same considerations to tiny forms that I do to big forms. I think that's what makes them charming. And if you're making minis and your walls are really thick, you're gonna find that it's a little clunky looking. Okay, so now I'm just going to kind of make the belly there. Do that a little bit more, push out that belly, and now I'm going to collar this in. So when I collar it, I'm going to squeeze a little bit, and then I need to do a compression pull. Oh, you can see I already have this one off a little bit from when I collared it. That's okay. So I do a compression, or I mean, do a collar. And then in order to do a compression when it gets so narrow, I am gonna take a tool because when your finger no longer fits in there, you will still need to compress it. There we go. 
then I'm going to trim off this very uneven top. Oop, that was an accident. We'll just work with that a little bit more there. And I am going to just trim that a little bit there. Uh, I'm going to grab my needle tool. Apparently, I left my needle tool where I left my knife. And there we go. It takes a little bit more finer cleanup, probably with these minis. Kind of round off that edge a little bit. And I'm gonna go ahead and cut like I did on the first time. Uh, I'm just gonna bring this in just a little bit more though. There we go. Take that profile in slightly. Since this is a vase, I'm not gonna wanna flip this and have to trim it. So I'm going to do two cuts. Cut number one, almost all the way through. Oh, it did go all the way through. And then cut number two all the way through. I'm gonna set that on my wear board. Okay. I think I'll do a few more, but I'll just kind of not really talk during these. This one I'm going to make into a pitcher and I'm going to make a spout just like I would a regular pitcher. my picture. Here's a little plate and once again you can see the double cut, the little bat sort of thing. I have to make sure this little lies flat. Okay. Okay. For this thin, delicate bowl, I wanted to show you the alteration. I'll use this end. going to make the little uh, flower shape that I often make on some of my bigger pieces. So I usually start uh, with one and then go like dead across from it. And then you can divide it however many different times. I'm going to do six because I love the symmetry of six-sided forms like snowflakes. There we go. Okay. 
This one's going to be a teapot. I'm going to make a gallery for the lid. This one will definitely be flipped and trimmed. Okay, and you can see the little gallery for the lid. The lid is going to have a little flange and then it's going to stick down in there. Now, I've reached the point again where I'm doing the teapot spout and I can't possibly fit my finger in there, so I resort to using my wooden tool. So this teapot spout is considerably longer than I would need. I will trim it just like I would trim a regular teapot spout. Sorry. Okay. Now, I'm going to do one thing that I would often do with a regular teapot spout. I'm going to bend it slightly. I'm going to give it a little curve. You can see I have it bending this way and then back again a little bit. So this edge right here, this is going to be the top of the teapot spout and this is the bottom. And eventually it's going to be cut, let's see, if I'm estimating right it's gonna be cut something like that okay I'm just gonna slice through this and if I slice through the bottom right now it's totally fine I think I have a hole there yeah so I sliced through the bottom totally fine because I really don't want water to stay sitting in there so there's my teapot spout now let's do the teapot lid Lids can be made numerous ways. You can have lids which are, you know, domed upward or recessed slightly. You can make them um, upside down. You can throw them upside down. You can throw them right side up. This one is going to be thrown right side up. And I'm going to just gauge how wide I need okay so a little bit less than this I'm gonna start off I'm gonna shape my little knob for the lid now normally I would use my calipers but these calipers are mighty big for uh, measuring the inside of such a small little tiny teapot. So I do just use uh, other tools that I have sitting around to catch like the width. Like I can uh, use this as a guide and I know I want the flange to be about as wide as this tool. So I do have a lot of excess clay right underneath here. I'm going to go ahead and trim away a little bit for my knob. And again, I could do this when it's leather hard. I'll just take some of this down right now though. So this is the flange that sits in the gallery. width looks just about good and the opening let's see I need to gauge how wide this opening is still might be a little on the wide side still not, might need to take down a little bit more right here There we go. 
And there's my little tiny lid. Okay, this one is going to be a lidded jar. I'm going to make a different type of lid than I did with the teapot. I'm going to make a domed lid. This one is made upside down. The domed lid, uh, I think of it as almost bowl-like, slightly bowl-like, you'll see. Okay, so this is the opening of the pot. So I need a flange that can fit up inside this opening. There we go, that will easily fit in there. Got a little extra room. Now, this part of the lid is going to be the domed part. When this becomes leather hard, I'll flip it over on the pot and then I'll trim the top. Okay, so this is my domed lid. It goes upside down like this on the pot, but obviously it's not domed yet. I have to trim it. And gosh, I've got one tiny little bit left. Okay. And this last little one is going to be like a tiny little version of some of my mugs. There we go. And I'll put a handle on that eventually. All right. So here are the minis that I made. I've got the lidded jar and the little lid that's going to go with it. A little mug, a little flower bowl, a little mug, flower bowl, pitcher. There's a little bit of water in that. I wanted to dump that out. Uh, teapot with spout and maybe lid. A little tiny vase, chubby vase bowl and then lastly back here in the back which I'll just turn it a plate that one's a little uh, flexible so I don't want to ruin that I'll show you uh, another uh, video how I would trim these because there are some cute little tricks on trimming great thanks